Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. My name's Baron Collins Hill. In this week's lesson, we're gonna be talking about tenor banjos, tenor guitars, octave mandolins, larger scale instruments that have a longer scale length from nut to bridge, uh, but are tuned like a mandolin, just down an octave. So G, D, A, E. This is a tenor banjo used a lot in traditional Irish music. And um, also, same with tenor guitars that are tuned G, D, A, E, octave mandolins. They all have a lot in common with mandolins, but there's also the longer scale to contend with and a little bit of sort of technique of how to hold the instrument that's important to get underneath your fingers in order to then take my free mandolin lessons that there are hundreds of videos of and graph those onto the longer scale instruments. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. All right, so using this tenor banjo as an example, tenor banjos will come in a variety of scale lengths. This is actually a fairly short uh, tenor banjo scale length. And this one's a little over 20 inches. Um, and with this instrument, what you can do is you can kind of choose which uh, fingering style you wanna use. You can use what I think of as mandolin uh, kind of finger technique on your left hand. a G scale, and you're using your pointer finger on the second fret, ring finger on the third, sorry, middle finger on the fourth, and ring finger on the fifth, and then you put your pinky out, stretch for that seventh fret. That's how you would play that scale on a mandolin. Um, that said, if you have a longer scale instrument or that stretch isn't comfortable for you, you can use what I refer to as guitar scale fingering. Um, where your pinky takes over the fifth fret. And so you have open G, second fret, fourth fret with your ring finger, fifth fret with your pinky. So your hand doesn't need to stretch out as much. Now, when I play a full scale tenor guitar or a octave mandolin, I'm usually using that guitar fingering. I can just get away with this mandolin style fingering on this instrument because it's a particularly short scale instrument. If you find that that guitar style left hand fingering works best for you, uh, it's important to sort of get that under your fingers, get nice and comfortable with your left hand. You know, take it nice and slow and easy at first while you figure out, you know, how not to overextend yourself. And then once you have that under your fingers, you can then watch all of my mandolin lessons and just sort of trace that fingering over instead. You know, I might be saying ring finger on the fifth fret, but just from that understanding of this video, you can then say, actually, I'm gonna use my pinky because that's what this longer scale instrument needs. Once you understand how you're gonna be using your left hand on the instrument, then the only other real thing to contend with is the fact that you are going to need to sort of figure out how to hold this larger, heavier instrument. Um, take the, you know, every instrument's a little bit different, so just spend some time with it. Make sure all of those kind of basics that I talk about in my beginner mandolin series about how to hold the instrument are as true as possible with keeping your arms relaxed, your shoulders nice and neutral, all that sort of stuff. And then get comfortable with the instrument and sort of how you want it to sound. For example, with this tenor banjo, I love the sound of the tenor banjo with the, the pick hitting the string much closer to the bridge. Then up near where, sort of where I would play an octave mandolin or a regular mandolin. Much darker. Much brighter, which I really, uh, prefer in sort of traditional Irish music context. So figuring out how you're gonna get the sound, how you're gonna be comfortable with the instrument, you know, explore different straps and ways to get comfortable with the instrument because just like with mandolin, the more comfortable you are holding the instrument, the longer you're gonna be able to play. The longer you play, the better you'll get. The better you get, the more fun you have. The more fun you have, the more you wanna play. It just kind of becomes a cycle. So being comfortable with the instrument in your hands and strapped to you is really important. Once you get comfortable with the technique and what you want the sound to be on the instrument, uh, then all you have to really contend with is occasionally you're gonna run into, you know, stretches that I talk about on the mandolin that you can't achieve on, on an octave mandolin. So this is an octave mandolin 
and with a low C string, it's also a mandocello. I've made a whole video on this instrument that you can find on YouTube or mandolessons.com. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to get, you know, the classic G chop would be. That's not gonna happen. So you need to figure out, okay, watching my mandolin lesson and you're telling me to do a stretch that I can't get, you gotta take a little time there, pause the video, figure out what you're gonna do instead and adapt from there. That's all for now. I really am hoping this lesson can get a lot of tenor banjo players, octave mandolin players, and other instruments tuned GDAE um, to use my mandolin lessons because all that information is much the same uh, and it's just a matter of grappling with the larger instrument. If you're looking for some guidance with these larger mandolin family instruments, you can always check and see if I am teaching any lessons on lessonface.com forward slash mando lessons. I currently have just a couple open slots this March uh, in 2023, if you're watching this after the fact, uh, but you can always check out lessonface.com forward slash mando lessons to get a one-on-one -on -one slot with me. Thanks so much for watching. Lots more lessons on YouTube, so subscribe over there if you haven't already, and check out all the resources at mandolessons.com, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.